Welcome back to my journey of an ultimate home kit smart home. I have been away for about three months in Kuwait overseas due to work and just want to give a few updates on my experiences being overseas with a smart home. First, I can say that nothing failed, whether it was updates to the Apple 17 framework across my devices or home kit in general. So I was really surprised and really happy with that, uh, especially since I was on betas for all my equipment or all my devices, I should say. Uh, I was able to check my smart home and view all my devices with no issues, uh, remoting in. Um, I heard horror stories in the past from people who like leave on vacations for a couple of weeks, whatnot, and the smart home just becomes unresponsive and stuff's not working. And I didn't have that issue at all. Granted, my wife was still here with the kids and everything, but um, everything still worked, no issues. And I'm very happy with that. Uh, second, the wife never complained, not once, about the smart home or the automations or, or anything that's um, related to HomeKit. Everything worked like it was supposed to, and I was really pleasantly surprised and very happy with my setup and everything. Uh, this is what you want out of a smart home, and I believe this is what Apple wants um, out of HomeKit. They just want it to work uh, like it should. Um, last... Um, I did have a couple of issues. Uh, those issues were not because of software or networking or HomeKit in general. It was something like physically altered the, the device, uh, like the, the TV, uh, the TCL TV that I reviewed. Um, I have it set up in HomeKit, so it has a button and everything. I can turn it on and off, switch inputs. Uh, but the thing is, is I want to say about two, maybe three weeks into my rotation in Kuwait, um, it just became uh, unresponsive. It had the, the, the dreaded no response. And I just, for the life of me, couldn't figure out why. And I was like going into the Ubiquiti app uh, for Unify and just kind of restarting the, the, the switch, the router a few times. And everything else was working fine. It's just, it just was not coming back up. So I thought maybe it was, you know, maybe some type of firmware happened over uh, while I was gone and it updated and it kind of, you know, worked some things. Come to find out, the Ethernet cable was just kind of unplugged. And I think my daughter had something to do with that. <laughs> uh, because right now, uh, you can't tell, but all my subwoofers are either unhooked or unplugged because, you know, she just goes back there and just do, do her thing. So. Um, now that I'm back and I'm able to kind of keep an eye on her to you know, keep her hands off that stuff, um, hopefully <laughs> uh, my stuff will be just fine. The other thing I had was the iSmart Gate uh, garage door opener. Um, garage door number two, which is the main garage door that uh, me and my wife use, um, that became um, showing a status of always open. And that happened about two weeks before I came back home. Um, all of a sudden, you know, I, you know, cause I daily, I checked um, in the home app daily, you know, just to check on the status of everything, make sure everything's good to go. And all of a sudden it was just showing open. And um, I looked at the camera feed, but the garage door was closed. Like I can physically see that the garage door was closed, but it was showing that it's open. And so of course I did the, did a restart thing on the iSmart gate, you know, I I went into the Unify, restarted it that way, and I even like open and close it because I had that same issue when I had my Q, especially with that wireless sensor, um, saying that it was open when it's really closed. So I thought maybe if I just open and close it a few times and maybe it kind of work work itself out. And it looked like it did for a second, and then all of a sudden it stopped showing that. And the reason why I wanted to get that kind of fixed and resolved is because I have an automation set up at nighttime, uh, especially with the alarm system. So if, if I am home and the alarm system is set to home and that means everyone's inside, you know, no one's leaving, everything's locked up. And all of a sudden someone opens the garage door, um, then it's going to shut off a red alert alarm on the home parts. And then it switches some of my uh, lights on the uh, safe and sounds to red, saying, hey, this is this is not normal. Someone shouldn't be opening the garage door um, at this time of night. 
you know, it's because if me and the wife are at home, and like I said, the security system set to our home, that means everyone's home, that's supposed to be home, um, that means somehow the garage door was compromised, and I wanted that uh, automation to make sure that, especially with I'm away, if she's here at home to, you know, to, to get into action, and so that actually went off <laughs> because I thought I fixed it, and sure enough, it, the, 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 the sensor, for whatever reason, was saying that it was open, and my wife was trying to, to call, and unfortunately, the, way I, the, the place I worked at, I couldn't have my phone on me, so she was trying to call, and she was like, hey, the alarm's going off, um, the lights are red, um, and all of a sudden, you know, and, I, and I got back uh, to my room in Kuwait, and I was like, oh, crap, so um, that morning, I had to go out and check the sensor, and I told her to check the sensor beforehand, she, and she did it, she forgot about it, uh, and check the wired sensor, because I think the sensor I told her to check was the, um, the sensor on the actual garage door opener for if uh, it's obstructed uh, to prevent it from closing on you uh, and crushing someone. Um, so I thought she was thinking that I was talking about that sensor, which wasn't the case. Um, so I had to go up there, get the step letter, and check the wire sensor on the Art Smart Gate. And sure enough, the magnetic sensor, the, the part that is free, uh, somehow got moved. And I just don't know. I probably could check the uh, the camera feeds or whatnot and, and see exactly what was happening. Uh, but somehow it got moved out of place. So I had to wipe get some more uh, 3M tape and reset the sensor back to the proper place and it started working fine no issues so those were the only two issues i had when it came to um no responses in home kit or a false uh response in home kit um so other than that that was pretty much it uh also you know, being away and everything with the updates to Apple TV and HomePods, whatnot, especially being on the beta versions. So I was constantly getting updates. And at one point in time, my OG HomePods took over as the main hub. Um, and I, at first I was kind of worried. And then all of a sudden I was like, I shouldn't have to worry uh, because it should just work. And believe it or not, it did work. Um, automation worked. Camera fees worked. Uh, I know in the past I said that, you know, whenever the HomePod took over, sometimes the, the camera fees can be a little laggy or whatnot. Uh, after tweaking some of my settings in Unify and making sure everything's good to go, um, I didn't have that issue, especially when I was remoting in. Uh, you know, granted, sometimes I didn't have the best uh, internet connection in Kuwait, but when I did have like really good solid Wi-Fi, uh, my camera fees came up like instantly, no issues, and I was able to see everything, and there was no lag, whatnot. The only issue is that Raspberry Pi that I have running Homebridge with the Unify plugin is because um, it's transcoding that 4K slash 2K resolution on the fly, and it's just not powerful enough. So I am gonna get that Intel Nook uh, that I had that I had running scripted on. Um, I'm going to reformat that, put Windows 10 on that again, get Homebridge up and running on that, um, and then use that as my Homebridge server uh, once uh, I kind of get that fixed. Once I do that, I think that's going to eliminate my transcoding issues. Um, it should be a lot more speedier uh, when it comes to pulling those camera feeds and whatnot. And because if you pull it right now on the Raspberry Pi, you, you, you can you can hear the sound. It's like kind of behind. It's like stuttering with the sound. The video feed is not too bad, but the actual sound from the video is is uh, horrendous. Um, so I was really pleasantly surprised that the OG HomePods did not break my thread network. Um, camera feeds work. Facial recognition worked. Automation uh, automations had no issues executing. 
Everything worked just fine. Wife did not have any issues. I could see every night whenever like the security system was armed like it was supposed to. Lights were turned off when it's supposed to or turn certain lights on. Uh, when the door is unlocked at nighttime, on the front door, the front porch light will come on um, quickly uh, with no delay or anything like that. So that's how it should work when it comes to your, your home, hubs, home hubs. So whether it's the Apple TV, um, HomePod Mini, or the OG HomePods, or the new HomePods, it all should just work just fine. Uh, I know that there's been, especially when you go on Reddit, you'll, you'll hear a lot of the, the um, uh, naysayers complain about, oh, I need to have the option to make uh, my Apple TV the home hub. And I used to be one of those. So I had those issues in the past. Uh, and I, that was due to my network, believe it or not. And you can have the most, like some people conflate with, oh, I got, you know, gigabyte internet, uh, gigabyte, you know, service, whatnot. That's not what it is. When it comes to your network, you have to have a solid network. You have to have good connections, uh, especially if you're dealing with Wi-Fi um, to those access points. So that's what I did with my network. So I, I like, especially with my HomePod. So each of my HomePods are dedicated to certain access points. So whatever is the closest access point to those HomePods is what is directed toward and it doesn't shift and it doesn't change or anything like that. Uh, so if you have your home hub that is constantly changing, um, then you have some disconnect issues going on with your network that shouldn't be happening. Um, my home hubs never change unless I do a update. So once it doesn't update, that's when it changes. Then it goes to the next hub that's available and then it'll update and then you know everything works and that's how it should be another thing that surprisingly um i was pleasantly surprised was my first alert one leak smart um carbon monoxide detectors i have not had a false alarm since the last time i had that rant on my video and that was like the biggest thing I was kind of worried about being overseas with Karina, uh, the wife and everything. Um, I was kind of worried that those alarms were going to go off, especially that, you know, in the middle of the night, but not because um, those things are, can be difficult to turn off sometimes because they'll trigger the interconnect and all the other ones will start going off and you have to silence each one. Um, so I did not have those issues. And hopefully I'll continue not having those issues and I will knock on wood on that one. And let's just pray that the, this trend continues. Um, after I did that vacuuming and kind of blowing it out with a, with an air compressor, I think I have all the, the, the dust and the dirt or whatnot. And also kind of fixed the humidity issue I had with my AC um, as well. Um, because I was keeping a lot of humidity in the house. I think that was causing some of the issues too. So once I kind of got that fixed, I stopped having those issues. So, um, last, um, if you're not, if you're not on the betas on 17.2 yet, there's been a couple updates. Um, one with uh, HomeKit and then one with the Apple TV. So with the Apple TV, I'll go ahead and pull it up right here for you guys. Um, if you notice when using the Apple TV app, you now have a side low bar on the left hand side, um, to do your searching, your go to the home, Apple TV plus, um, right now, major leagues, uh, soccer is a big thing that Apple is pushing right now. So they have that sports store library. So the library is of course all your iTunes movies you have. Um, on your iTunes account, and then you have certain channels um, that are on your Apple TV uh, app. So, like, I subscribe to the Paramount Plus because there's some shows I want to watch on Paramount Plus, and that's one of the channels I can pull up. And, you know, Prime, HBO Max, Hulu, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, and all that good stuff. So, that is a new feature on Apple TV. 
Um, another new feature is on the actual home app. When it comes to uh, activity notifications. So, oops, they have added a couple or well, three new um, detections you can do. So you have the unknown people are detected, uh, unknown faces are detected, and known faces are detected. The animals, the vehicles, and the packers were always there. So those are three new ones added to um, your doorbell when it comes to activity notifications. Um, this is my iPad, so normally I don't have these enabled because then I have a whole bunch of notifications on my iPad, um, which I don't need because I usually use, have my phone near me anyways. Um, so besides that, I did do a short on the new um, energy tab. Um, I believe this is gonna be a new feature when it comes to energy monitoring, especially when you have those like the E plug with energy monitoring, um, that solar, I think uh, once matter gets a little bit more involved, uh, we'll see the energy tab right here be a lot more, um, what's the word? a lot more fidelity when it comes to showing exactly what's going on with the uh, the uh, the power grid we're going on within your house. And also should, it might be able to show the power grid um, that you're pulling from as well. Um, so that'd be kind of cool. So that is pretty much it when it comes to a uh, quick update for where I'm at um, in Smart Home Journey. Like I said, I just got back. I still got some honey to do list to do around the house. Uh, I still owe you guys a video on the Let Me um, HDMI sync box, which I do have hooked up. It's working. Uh, my biggest gripe with the sync box is Dolby Vision. Um, I'll go into a depth on that one. Uh, I do want to, because I have to run some more cables, some HDMI cables. I got some more updated, like bona fide, like. Um, 8K cables just in, in for I'm kind of future proofing a little bit just to make sure I have those cables in place so I'm not worried about pulling those cables through later on um, when I do decide to get an 8K TV once they become more um, available and a lot cheaper of course uh, so I do want to run uh, another HDMI cable in the back so I have two cables um, both 8K cables and I want to play with that uh, Let Me box a little bit more because um, a lot of the reviewers, you know, they're they're not saying they have an issue with Dolby Vision. I'm having an issue with Dolby Vision when it comes to the color, um, the ambient colors around the screen. So I'm just not sure exactly why I'm having that issue. I'm not sure if it's the cable. I'm not sure it's the, the receiver or whatnot because I do have a... Onkyo receiver, the HDMI's on that are HDMI 2.0 and not 2.1. Um, I mean, because eventually I'm gonna have to get a new receiver or whatnot, but I should still be able to pass Dolby Vision with no issue, and that Dolby Vision should be able to go to a Litme box with no issue and produce their correct colors. Because right now it produces a red border around any film that is Dolby Vision, especially when I'm streaming from um, Disney Plus. Um, but other than that, um, I still have some cables to run. I still have some TVs I have to mount on the wall, especially in my bedroom. Uh, I have the TV, that 60 inch that I did have in here initially before I busted my 65 inch Vizio. Uh, that Sharp TV is in the garage. I want to mount that, put an Apple TV to that. Uh, I do want to run, I'm not sure how I'm going to run the cables to the garage. If I'm gonna run, run Ethernet cables directly to the switch in the laundry room, or do I want to daisy chain a small little flex switch from Unifly in the garage and have the rain machine, the Apple TV, the Sharp TV, 
and the iSmart gate run off that hub or that little small switch and then uh, run this one cable to the garage as opposed to multiple cables. Um, either way, it, it won't matter because the the amount of data that I'm trying to pull from those are, are minimum. Um, and then some of those connections are fast ethernet, which is 100 megabits, it's not even a gigabit. Um, when it comes to those type of connections, the only thing that's gonna be a gigabit connection would be the Apple TV that's in the garage. Um, and then other than that, uh, we're starting to get ready for Christmas. <laughs> uh, so I am looking at some of the Christmas trees, uh, especially like the twinkly. I'm gonna look at Black Friday and see if maybe Twinkly does some deals on Black Friday and maybe get a tea, uh, tree there. Um, we'll see. Um, but I'm also in the market to get another TV. I'm probably looking at like a 65 inch, um, but I can do another 55 inch. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Um, either between 55, 65 inch, because the, the TV that's in the master bedroom right now, that's gonna go outside. Um, and then whatever new TV I do get, that's gonna go into the master bedroom. So 65 inch would be preferable, but we'll see. Um, we'll see what the deals. Um, I've seen a few that's pretty cheap right now for a 60, 65 inch. Um, right now, um, within the price range that I'm, I'm looking for. But, you know, Black Friday is supposed to be where you can get those killer deals, whatnot. And if I can get a 65 inch, that's around three, 350. I might pull the plug on that one and go for that. And then uh, we'll see about the, the tree and whatnot. I mean, I have a, a tree already, uh, which I'll properly placed right over there. Um, but it's one of those old school trees with the, it has lights already um, wired in them, um, but they're not the LED lights, it's the incandescent lights, which I don't like because they pull more power than the LED lights. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I'd like to thank everyone for your patience. I know I have been putting out videos due to me being overseas, you know, due to my job and everything, but I am back now. Um, that was my last <laughs> overseas little stint um, for my career in the military. And from there on, I'll be home side, you know, unless something crazy happens. Um, I should still be here and I'll be able to make some more videos. Like I said, uh, I do plan on getting the Gobi outdoor permanent lights. They have a new pro version, which is matter um, certified, which means I can get that into home kit now. So that was the biggest thing. Hold me back from the original um, Gobi outdoor permanent lights was it didn't work with HomeKit and it wasn't working with Matter either. Um, but now they have that pro version and I'm looking at that. I'm probably looking at that for Black Friday as well. So um, this, this is a, there's gonna be a few things I'll be looking at for Black uh, Friday after Thanksgiving. So between the, the tree, uh, 65 inch, 55, 65 inch TV, and then the outdoor, um, permanent lights because the the wife she was really adamant about getting those lights um not just for christmas but for any type of season like halloween um fourth of july and christmas um we'll be able to display those lights with certain colors or not and be a little more festive around the house so uh yeah so that is pretty much it uh, I do appreciate everyone's patience. Like I said, I appreciate uh, the scratches I did pick up while I was overseas. I do appreciate you guys. Continue to watch the, the content. Um, I'll be pushing out more content more frequently um, now that I'm here and I'll have a lot more free time. Um, if you have any questions, please drop a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you notice, I reply to all my comments because um, I am a small channel, so I do have time. And I'll be able to reach out and give you some of the advice, some of the issues I have, and we'll go from there. Um, like I said, if you want to, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one.